Y'all Reaper team, what's going on? Good morning, it's September 7th. It's beautiful out guys, northwest wind. Finally got that little fall chill in the air. All the kitties are back to school today, I'm so excited. God, I needed this summer to end. Ah, I just needed it over. So, adios everybody. But anyway, um, we're going fluking today guys. I think today's gonna be the swan song on the ocean fluking. This season ends September 15th. Uh, we got a big southwest blow coming tomorrow, and then after that, I believe it's Hurricane Larry or something like that. I don't know. I haven't even been following. It's coming up, and normally once you get big swells, um, you know, this time of year, uh, what it does, it turns up the bottom, and typically it'll shut down them, that fluke bite, and it'll be over. Um, it'll recover. It's just it won't recover in time for the, you know, in time for the season um, before it closes. So anyway. Now, team, in years past, when I was a teenager, I mean, fishing with my father on, on his boat, you know, we would in early to mid-October, still be fluke fishing. I mean, we'd literally go out three miles, not on any specific structure. Occasionally, we'd go on a lump, and we would get fluke and weak fish, no problem. Um, those days are long gone, unfortunately. Um, all of those inshore lumps have all been raped um, for, you know, the stupid dredging operations. Um, any remnants of any native seagrass and native, you know, small little crustaceans and, and the the you know the phytoplankton and all the all the little microorganisms that need to be at that ecosystem it's long gone it's really sad um but i figured i would just mention that yeah, yeah in your past so one last shot guys it's late it's 8 45 i worked till 1 a.m last night and i'm exhausted uh but i know i needed to at least get up and get out here today because i knew it was my last shot uh, i'm off the next couple of days but like i said i don't think i'm getting out anywhere so that's the plan guys we're gonna go out to the wrecks the reefs pound it out let's try and get one last fluke limit here Super pump, baby. I'll see you guys out there. So yeah, guys, first wreck. Um, you know, in looking at my logs, this is a wreck that I love the fish, specifically this week. Uh, of the year and um, you know the gentleman in the in the black hole center console there he's a really good fisherman right out of Atlantic City he was already there um, so uh, yeah you know he it's his wreck in at least in my opinion um, and then another boat showed up right when I'm cursing right there so um, I'm not going to sit there and and fight over you know one small piece it's not really fighting it's just you know hopefully you share you, you jockey for position but Oh well, guys, that was a bummer. There's two guys on that first rack. I really wanted to fish. There's fish there too. The one guy got a nice one, but I'm not gonna sit there and jockey around all day. It's just no fun. There's another guy on one of my other wrecks. Uh, there's another wreck close by. I'll see. Hopefully that one doesn't have anybody on it. I was really bummed. I thought today everybody would be have to go back to work, but nobody works anymore. So, all right, guys. So I had enough of that. As I told you earlier, uh, I went for the total home run shot. So I am 10 miles. 12 miles to the northeast of where I was. Uh, pretty far offshore. The closest land is probably, um, I don't know, 15, 18 miles. So don't do this at home. I don't recommend this. I'm crazy. Um, so don't duplicate this. But uh, this is a wreck I've never been to. Um, I don't think it's very big. Uh, let's see if we can even find it. The water clarity is better. There's no one around. I'm soaked. My boat's soaked. So I hope this pays off, guys. All right, guys, this thing is uh, really small, uh, very low lying, but I found it. So let's see if we can drift over it here. Um, I got a five ounce magic tail bucktail on there and um, strips of sea bass and uh, Spanish mackerel from the last trip. I'm in 95 foot, so I'd imagine there's going to be a lot of sea bass down there. And I literally don't mark much on the sounder at all. Super low lying. Oh, there's the wreck. All right. Probably sea bass there. That's not the right species, but it's okay. We're on it. That's all. It's small, so probably every time I catch a fish or rebait, I'll go reset and do it again. I see it marking it good there. Come on, mate. Let's do some fluke bites. Another sea 
bass, guys. Really sea bass. I seem to be doing just five with five ounces. So that's pretty good. Uh, I took the bucktail off. I haven't really been catching much on that anyway, and it just snagged the wreck. So I just have five ounce weight, dropper loop, you know, kind of like a tog rig with uh, with meat. I have a peanut bunker, but I feel like they're just going to get taken by the, you know, sea bass, and you only really get one shot with them. So the meat holds up a little better. Alright, finally. Check. Proof, they're down there. Need the bigger specimens now. That one definitely bit different. Alright guys, I'm just gonna pound this wreck. There's no one here, it's just me. Super pumped. And we're just gonna pound it. Let's just see if we can't get these fluke to bite here, the bigger ones. That's a nice fluke. He just wilded it. Absolutely wild. <clears throat> I don't think so, huh? Close. That one's gonna be close. We'll see. I'll measure that one. All right, team, so you'll see me there, you know, futzing around, trying to find my measuring tape. I couldn't find it at that point, but uh, that fish was probably every bit of 18 inches, but I let it go. I was really out there looking for really nice fish, you know, where I didn't, I just laid the net in and put them in the cooler and didn't have to worry about it. But uh, yeah, that was probably definitely a keeper, but uh, I was out there, you know, looking for good fish. That's fluke. Close again, guys. Pretty close. They like that that gulp. So let's see. Come on, baby. It's got to be bigger ones down there. Only a little smaller gulp here. Let's try that. I don't know. species another nice one jeez It's like dropping real here almost, you know? Go. Close, like they're all the same size. 17 and a half, I don't know. 18 maybe, I really don't know. I don't want them that size, I want them big. I came out here for big ones. I don't think I've ever been out on the wrecks and caught this many throwbacks and not one keeper. So at this point, you know, I hadn't had a single keeper. So once I found that measuring tape, I was super pumped. I was like, all right, now we're in the game. You know, it is what it is. I'll measure them from here on out. If they're 18, we're keeping them. All right, there we go. 
That's a nice one. That one's actually pulling drag. There we go. That one's pulling drag. That's a fluker. Come on, baby. Stay tight. Stay tight, baby. Come on. This will be a good one, guys. Come on, baby. Stay tight. Oh, he's shaking his head. He's shaking his head. Oh, baby. Come on. Stay tight. Oh, yeah. Dude, the guy's pulling drag. He's pulling drag. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice fish. Nice fish. Not a monster, but a nice fish. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Big one. Nice fish. Come on, baby. Come on up here. Come to daddy. Come to daddy in the net. Yeah. Whoa, yeah, baby. That one's big, guys. Whoa. Yo. Yo, team. That's a big one. Yes. Dude. That there's a big one, guys. Look. Woohoo. All right, team. That's a big one. He hit the bottom, and I had him hooked under the chin. Um that's a good one yeah all right that's what i'm out here for guys you know i came out here for some nice big fish um that one's probably every bit of 26 27 inches maybe i don't know well uh it's not quite a 10 i'm out here i want my 10 but beautiful fish nonetheless all right that's one there we go all right now guys when you're doing this wreck and refluking Boat positioning and being on the right structure is probably a thousand times more important than actually having the right bait or rig or lure or whatever. Um, it's all about boat placement, the proper drift, um, the most important thing out here. That flounder had a whole fish in his mouth that was totally digested, but every bit of, you know, five, six inches. They're predatory creatures, guys. They'll eat, you know, big baits. Oh yeah, oh yeah, baby. That's another good one. That's another good one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, baby. Oh, he popped off. Oh, he popped off. Oh, that was number two. Ah, damn. I got too excited. Ah, shoot. That was number two. Damn it. Dag of living. Ah, oh, man, that was a nice one. Ah. Oh. Nikes. Oh, damn. Come on, eat it. Son of a monkey. Alright, team, so hopefully we can get through this without little Rambo attacking us. Uh, he's a maniac little cat, and we've called him. He's about, uh, I don't know, eight, nine months now. There he is. But anyway, team, so this is the, the rod and rail setup I was using in that video. So it's a Shimano Tranks. It's the 300 HG model. I want to say I got it for $269 or $279, uh, but don't quote me on that. Um, it's somewhere around there, mid-200 mid range. Um, and then the rod is an OTI or Ocean Tackle Inc. Um, so it's a special jigging rod. It's called the Pitch Black Series, and let's get the model for you. So it's OTI PB66. 350A, um, line 25 to 40 pounds, lure, uh, says up to 12 ounce. So, um, so real quick with this, with this rod guys. So the, the rig that I really did the best on this day. So I've got 20 pound power pro. You can go as high as 30 if you want. I like lighter because you can fish lighter jigs to get down there. All right. Um, oh Rambo, get out of there. You're going to hook yourself. Anyway, and then I'll, oh, Bambo, see you hooked yourself, you knucklehead. Get out of here. All right, I got to lock him up. He's going to get hooked. Get out of here. Get away. All right, anyway, he's fine. He's a knucklehead. So, yeah, I, I didn't trim this. I was just, you know, flying around. So, you know, 100 pound barrel swivel. And then I like to use 30 pound. Um, you really don't need uh, fluorocarbon monofilm. It's fine. So, dropper loop. Typically, I like a small bucktail, three eighth ounce, and then. Down from there, I use a, a three to five ounce. So this is a three to five ounce magic tail bucktails. All right, you can see a big old eye, I like that. And this is a smaller three A. So then what you do is, I like to do, you know, big piece of meat or gulp on the bottom and then a smaller gulp on the top, okay? Um, and you can see in the video, I mean, I can jig all day with this. I just kind of keep it under my, under my right arm. And, and the jigging motion is nothing crazy, all right? Um, now this rod, it gets to right about here 
somewhere around there you can see it really load up um, the only thing I will say is it may be a little light when I'm fishing five ounces and above in really deep water this wreck was you know almost 100 feet deep so maybe a little light on the tip to really get that that hook set but uh, I fished it shallower you know 50 to 70 foot and it's just awesome but um, it packs a lot of a lot of punch I mean look at that that thing just loads right up right around that second or third guide so yeah so that's the rod Shimano Tranks OTI I'm really digging the OTI stuff guys this is my second rod from them um, so if you guys are listening give me a sponsor will you I'll see you the boat autopilot um, you know you can use them in coda to, to do autopilot It'll keep you on a course and I'm right about um, prop speed 2 it's keeping me right under you know I don't know 0 0.5 0 0.7 miles per hour um, I had no drift so I made my own drift so yeah perfect honestly too guys I'm stinking it up this trip I've lost so many keepers I've lost so many well what felt like nice fish but yeah all right that's two I'm just gonna keep pounding this out keep doing the same pattern they're holding off the rack. Oh, I got another one on that rod. Yeah, another sea bass. God, guys, I don't know how many fish we've caught today. Jeez. Might be it guys right here. Maybe number three. He walloped it pretty good. Getting a little smaller though. They're hanging right on the down slope of the rack, man. Pretty much every time now, now that I'm in autopilot, every time I go down that slope of the rack, probably right onto the sand or low-lying stuff. There they are. I think this will be a keeper. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be close. All right, team, we're done. That's uh, just about 18 and three quarters, 19 inches. So we're all done, guys. It's beautiful. Nice, perfect fluke. We got our limit. Um, I'm pretty sure now that I'm looking at this one, I think probably those other three I threw back were, were keepers too. So uh, easy limit. Um, I don't know. I might, I might play around here a little bit longer. I'm not really sure. It's such a beautiful day. Um, today's a really good example. Um, we had a really good pattern. We got here. There was a little bit of a drift. Uh, with the remnants of that northwest wind and then the wind really died and we had no drift at all um, I started off with uh, you know meat and that was working when we had a little drift and then that stopped working and then because uh, I was getting too many sea bass and then what I did was I switched over to the bucktails um, and the bucktails were working really good while we had a little drift and then we lost the drift lost the bucktail bite so with the Minn Kota, I made my own uh, drift so beautiful just a perfect example of how you got to kind of adapt um, each day is different. You got to adapt to what the conditions are allowing um, and don't be afraid to change things up. So yeah, that's my limit. Super pumped. I'm sure we had a limit and then some. Yeah, let's get home, I guess. I don't know. I'm tired. <laughs> I'll see you guys. So guys, real quick, I'm cleaning up and uh, on that last drift, I noticed that annoying noise with my uh, live well. <laughs> that's not going to cut it. <laughs> It looks like that sheared right off. That that piece sheared right off, so yet another fix. So that's a through haul that uh, is open to the environment. So let's get back in. Um, Let's 
nice one. So, very much oh my so. God. They shrink when you get them back on land. So this one was uh, only about uh, 24 and a half inches. So not as big as I thought. Wow. Still a nice one. And yeah, th this one had a one had a whole fish in its mouth. Pretty much. Really? Yeah. And this one was just about 19 inches. All right. This one, this one was probably 21. No, probably like 20. I think. Well, Very so, nice. This one was uh. Yeah, this one was 20, this one was 20 and a half, so. Bingo. So yeah, guys, so Alana just got home from work, so as always, man, you know, she's got it rough, so she just got home. I have a surprise for her upstairs, and then also, I'm gonna make crab stuff flounder tonight. Unfortunately, the crab meat is not fresh. I had to buy some from the store. Uh, I haven't been crabbing lately, but at any rate. Uh, at any rate, guys, I can't thank you enough for watching. I love y'all, I appreciate it. Um, God bless y'all. God bless this country. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you on the next video. Super pumped, baby.